I would encourage you to stop. I'll just tell you that you're being watched. The point of the phone call is stop what you're doing. Mmm, not gonna do that. Fuck you, Charlie. It's been a really busy summer for me, and I want to talk about something that happened that I actually missed and then caught up to later. And I'm going to go even further than uh, the initial event. Not long ago, these Patriot Front guys showed up at a Proud Boys festival. There's a lot to this, a lot of shit that people don't realize. And they were demasked. When they were demasked, it was obvious that these were not white supremists showing up all masked up. They wear uh, fed pants, khakis, and they cover their faces, their hairlines, everything. Check this out, and then we'll get into it. You see these fed outfits, and literally they are covered, so no facial recognition can ID them at all. Sunglasses, ninja masks, baseball hats, the whole thing. Typical Mossad, fed, Sanim, type stuff. So a fight ensues and what ends up happening is they get demasked. This is very, very important. Here we go. The mask gets pulled off him and he instantly goes into shock and fear mode, terrified covers his face check that out look at it look at it. that is fear and you could see the terror on his face to me this is almost pornography because whether or not i agree with what any of these people are doing when you go into an event to subvert another group of people and the aim is to make them look like criminals or worse than they are or whatever you are a piece of shit so this is like pornography to me to see the fear. Look at, look at, look at the fear on his face right there. That is awesome. That is just awesome. You can look at this guy and tell that he is not a white supremacist or a patriot front guy at all. But what people don't realize is that this has been going on for years and years. This is nothing new. This is old school. They pretend to be racists online horrible people they go and type you know all blank must die right and then their buddies go to those places and then screen cap the comments and then make a whole news article on it to get these uh video sites taken down or censored or targeted or whatever you have groups of them pretending to be christians they're everywhere you have people on ti channels pretending to be ti's and you can tell that they're not because of what they talk about. And they're totally obsessed with Nazis. They're always obsessed with Nazis. It is very obvious when you study these people uh, who they are, what they do, and why they're doing it. And they get paid to do this kind of shit. This person right here, I'm not going to name him because they'll come after my channel. But it turned out that he was a uh, an aspiring fed. So he's either working fed Mossad or a private agency that is doing the same kind of stuff like the cubes. So that's what's going on But let me give you a, a background on this This started a long time ago and one of the most famous ones began in the late 70s like 78 when they moved into Skokie, Illinois Right before a bunch of media stuff began Skokie 70,000 middle-income people have attracted a lot of business But Skokie has also attracted a neo-nazi group and a lot of controversy the National Socialist Party headquarters are on the other side of town, far away from Skokie, but the distance hasn't eased the tension. Party members have made Skokie a target. And the scary lead Nazi was a guy named Frank Collins, who led all these Nazis marching through Jewish neighborhoods to scare everybody and show you, you know, that Nazis were alive, that they were marching through the streets of America. Well, it turned out that Frank Collins wasn't really Frank Collins. Frank Collins' name was actually Frank Cohen, and his dad was a Holocaust survivor. You know, this is nothing new. In the 1990s, a scary Nazi entered the scene, and his name was Davis Wolfgang Hawk. And he spouted all the typical Nazi stuff and had the, all the paraphernalia and all the stuff to scare the shit out of people that Nazis were coming in. And as time went by, it turned out that Davis Wolfgang Hawk wasn't really Davis Wolfgang Hawk. 
His name was really Andrew Britt Greenbaum. He ended up being the guy that did the big uh, penis pill spam thing. And I'm sure you remember that from the late 90s, getting emails all the time for penis pills, right? That was the guy. So he went from Nazi to penis pill pusher after the Nazi thing didn't pan out or once the operation was done. So this is nothing new. That guy getting busted, terrified. It's so glorious. I could watch it over and over. In fact, let's loop his terror a few times. I I love it. I absolutely love it. It's like pornography to me, especially there when he turns around and looks like he's checking for cameras and he sees that camera and he's like, oh, I am fucked. I am so fucked. My career as a Mossad agent is over. But anyway, we can move on because it doesn't stop there. And these are just a few examples of this. It happens all the time. Here is a guy named Michael Slay. And he was a a national socialist and advocate for the extermination of all non-whites. He has written for the Daily Stormer and the right stuff that is, right? This guy sounds scary and hardcore. As it turned out, he ran a bunch of different sock puppets. And these sock puppets did everything from try to talk Arabs into building bombs and doing things to uh, writing for the Times of Israel and saying that all Palestinians must be exterminated. Really horrible, hardcore stuff, right? So Michael Slay ended up getting busted eventually, and he wasn't really Michael Slay. His name was Joshua Goldberg. And here he is, looks like a chubby Getty Lee, smiling for the cameras on his graduation day. And uh, let me pull up his uh, mugshot. And here he is, convicted of attempting of a bombing on the 14th anniversary of the September 11th attacks while posing as an Islamic terrorist affiliated with ISIS. There he is. And what they did was they claimed mental health. When this guy got busted, they claimed mental health when he was running an operation. But he's no different than the guy that was posing as a white supremacist patriot front guy. It's the same exact thing over and over and over. Here's our boy after he got busted with his hands up. And it says here that after graduation, he plans to work for the government. They are out there in real life operating in the three-dimensional space. But I am telling you, there is 10 times the amount of them online because they're bad enough in 3D, right? They're bad enough at their jobs. In the online space, they're even worse. And they really believe that you can't tell who they are. You know, when they're running 50 sock puppets and they talk the same in all the sock puppets or the brand new sock puppet that shows up that starts chatting you up knows about things that happened three years ago. You know, there's all these little nuances and things and and figures of speech they use and whatever that totally gives them away every time. And they think that they're actually good at their job. It's amazing. And it doesn't stop with Nazis. They have the entire terrorism thing covered. So here is Adam Gadon, and he is Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda all the way. ISIS and Al-Qaeda. ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Well, as it turns out, He was born in 1978 in Oregon, and Gadon's paternal grandfather, Carl Perlman, was a Jewish activist. So this guy is really, his name is Adam Perlman. So he is the voice of the terrorists, and he's just some kid operating. You know, you have feds, Mossad, Sainim. This is all the same organization. They are all together, working together for the same goals. They're the same people that are operating this technology, getting people to go out and do insane things at schools, at universities, at shopping malls, wherever. In the movie theater, it is an agenda. You know, all these cases in the past were driven by technology, ran by people that these people are associated with. So the sock puppets online that create these fake TI channels and talk this insanity, you know, all, all these insane stories to make it sound insane are the same people that play Nazis. They're ran by these people. And every time they get a chance, they give themselves away. The playbook never changes. 
playbook never changed. 1978, they were doing this. 2023, they're doing this. And they were doing it before 78. It was just when it started to become very apparent what was happening. And there was an agenda at play. It's the same agenda. And the fake TI channels are very unique. They're the only ones that respond to their own comments, their own videos. It's a mirage and they create these insane narratives where they blend gang stalking and RF weapons into the same thing all the time. They work really hard at that. So they create accounts and then they pick on those accounts. But their goal is to make everything sound as insane as possible and to blend narratives together that RF weapons are gang stalking and gang stalking is RF weapons and create confusion and make it as scary as possible for people. There's no way out and all these people are doing this to you and it's the neighbors is a big one. They want everyone to think it's their neighbors are doing it to them. Just make it as fearful and crazy sounding as possible. That's their goal. Just like when they depict Nazis, they try to make the Nazis as racist and homicidal as possible. And you can tell they're the same people because the ones that pose as the TIs are just as obsessed as the other people are with Nazis. They're obsessed with Nazis, but they really believe that they're out there fooling people. It's amazing, but pay attention to this stuff. There's a lot to be learned in this, and that's it for now. Look out for Charlie. That's it. That's it. What's it? It's just too strong. Too strong. Better. Perfect. We water it down. Precisely.